Hey, what's going on, everybody? I have all my bright colors because today is a bright day. What's today, A.B.? You know what today is. Today is Resurrection Sunday. And let me tell you guys what that means to us as believers of Jesus Christ. Absolutely everything. And for that very reason, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I have a very short message because the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, to me, that says enough. So what we're going to do, we're going to celebrate. Let's get some praise in here. Let's get some worship in here. And I'll be back to share a brief message with you. And then we're going to go right back to get our celebration on. It's Resurrection Sunday. Let's go, y'all. Ow! Sing, Holly. 
celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, but not just that with him, we are celebrating our resurrection in him because in him there is life. And as we sing this next song, I'm just reminded of a story that's found in John chapter 11. And it's talking about, if you're familiar with the story of Lazarus, Lazarus had died and they called on Jesus and Jesus came and and rose Lazarus from the grave and called him out of the grave. But the Bible says in John chapter 11, Verse 44, that the dead man came out bound hand and foot with linen strips and with his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unwrap him and let him go. You see, Lazarus had walked out of the grave. He was free from the grave, but he was still wearing the things that were meant for the tomb. And he had to be freed from those things. Now, what I really love about this is that when we pick up and we read about Jesus walking out of his grave, The Bible says in John chapter 20 and verse three, that Peter and the other disciple went out heading for the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying there. You see, Jesus didn't carry his grave clothes out of the tomb with him. He left the things that were meant for the tomb in the tomb 
so that we could do the same through him. The Bible also says in John chapter eight, that if the son sets you free, you will really be free. (laughs) It's not partial freedom. You haven't walked out of the grave and you're still wearing the things that were meant for the tomb. You are free indeed. And so as we go into this next song and we talk about this resurrected King who's resurrecting us, we're celebrating his resurrection, but with him, we are, we are called to life too. There is life in him for us. And so as we go into this next song, as we worship together and as we sing this, I want you to really believe that there is life for you in our risen Lord. So we're gonna take some time, we're gonna sing through this and we're gonna praise him together, but let that truth just wash over you in this moment.
turns watched in vain was borrowed for three days his body Hallelujah. Hey, you guys, I am full of joy and you should be full of joy. It's Resurrection Sunday. Let's dive into the word of God. Matthew chapter 28, verse one calls our attention where it reads, after the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. Why? For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone. I could see him like with his finger just rolling it, rolled back the stone and sat on it like it's nothing. We'll preach about that later. Verse three, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Look at verse 5. Then the angel said to the women, here it is, y'all. Y'all ready? Do not be afraid. Why? For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Verse 6 is where it is, you guys. Let's go. Let's celebrate. If you're in the house with the dog, the cat, the children, wherever you are, whoever you're with, let's celebrate. Verse 6 says, he is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come, come. Just in case you don't believe me, come and see the place where he lay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to take a moment to praise him because this is what it's all about. The angel said, he is not here. Listen, he has risen. In other words, he got up. He got up. In fact, that's our title for this Resurrection Sunday for 2021. He got he got up. This is the heartbeat for me every time it comes around to Resurrection Sunday every year. This is how my mind thinks about Resurrection Sunday. There's nothing that we can do to add to what Christ has already done. He got up. There's nothing that we can do to add to what Christ has already done. He got up. Listen, people of God, don't take those three words for granted because everything that we believe hinges on the truth that he got up. Let me say that one more time. Let me slow it down. I'm a little bit excited because it's Resurrection Sunday, but you still got to get this brief word. 
Everything that we believe, y'all, it hinges on the truth that he got up. Let me show you. Let me show you. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13 says, If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. Look at verse 14, y'all. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. Let me, let me read that verse again. This is why this is a big deal. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. Verse 17 goes on to say, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. If Jesus Christ was not raised from the dead, your faith is empty. Your faith is absolutely nothing. And then the part that really gets my heart, you and I will still be in our sins. That's if Christ was not raised from the dead. But this isn't the case. You know and I know that our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he what? He got up. Notice that the angel said, he is not here. He has risen. Listen, just as he said, good God almighty, just as he said, thought number one for today, for resurrection Sunday, thought number one, I can take him at his word. Yes, you can. Yes, I can. I'm about to jump through this window back here. I can take him at his word. He is not here. He has risen just as he said, because he got up, I can what? Take him at his word. The angel said, he's not here. He got up just like he said. You can take him at his word. Jesus did everything that he said he would do, including rising from the dead. At least three times Jesus predicted his death. Watch this. We can take Jesus at his word. Why? Because he kept his word. We can take Jesus at his word because he kept his word. Therefore, whoever Jesus says I am, I am. Whatever Jesus says I can do, I can do. Whatever Jesus says I can have, I can have. Why? Because he is not here. He has risen just as he said. You and I can take him at his word. Do you know the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Listen, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. What does that mean? Everything. Since God's word doesn't return back to him void, you no longer have to live your life with a void. Hallelujah. Since God's word doesn't return back to him void, you no longer have to live your life with the void. You don't have to walk around broken. You don't have to walk around empty. You don't have to walk around confused. You don't have to walk around depressed. You are who God says you are, and you can do what God says you can do. See, the tomb was empty so that our lives could be full, y'all. That's why I'm so excited. The tomb was empty so our lives could be full. Jesus said it like this in John chapter 10, verse 10. He says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. See, the tomb was empty so that our lives could be full. And because he got up, I like the second thought for today on Resurrection Sunday. Because he got up, thought number two, I can get up. Hallelujah. Because he got up, you can get up, I can get up. Because he got up, you know what? I can get up.
Let me tell you why I'm so excited that I can get up. See, it doesn't matter what life throws at me. It doesn't matter how much life and situations try to keep me down because he got up. You know what? Then I can get up. It doesn't matter what life throws at me. It doesn't matter how much life and situations try to keep you down. Because he got up. Hear me, people of God. You can get up. Let's go scripture. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, Lord have mercy, what? Lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he would give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. Don't you understand that the same spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is living inside of you? You're stronger than you think. There's more power living inside of you than you can ever imagine. This is why through faith, this is why through Jesus Christ, since he got up, you can get up. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 36, as it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Look at verse 37. Oh, no, it doesn't matter what I face. No, in all these things. We are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, because he got up, we can now have the faith that Abraham had by saying, come what may, I'm coming back from this. That's what we was just simply reading in the book of Romans. Come what may, I'm coming back from this because he got up. I can get up. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves me. I love the faith of Abraham, y'all. I'm going to show y'all something. One of my favorite things in the Bible Abraham had this faith that said, I'm coming back from this no matter what. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. It's crazy, y'all. Even after God told Abraham to sacrifice his son, listen to Abraham's faith in Genesis chapter 22, verse 5. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey. While I and the boy go over there, listen to what Abraham told the boys. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. but I thought God told you to sacrifice your son. Abraham said, I understand, but we will come back to you. Lean in. Abraham was saying, this isn't the end. It's not going to end like this. I'm going to walk this thing out, but I'm coming back from this. There's resurrection power looking over me. There's resurrection power guiding me. There's a promise on the other side of this process, and this is why I can get up from this place of fear. This is why I can get up from this place of uncertainty. And this is why I can get up from this place of insecurity. I'm coming back from this because he got up. I can get up. You can get up. I want you to look whatever situation you're facing in the face and say, just like Abraham, I'm coming back from this. I'm coming back from this stronger. I'm coming back from this better. I'm coming back from this wiser. Why? Because resurrection power lives inside of me. The same spirit that raised God, the, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is living inside of me. Come what may, I can get up. I'm coming back from this. Lastly, you can take him in his word. I can get up. And lastly, I will get up. I will get up. 
I will get up. Hear me. Because Jesus got up for the believer of Jesus Christ. Death no longer has the last word. Let me say that one more time. Because Jesus got up for the follower and the believer of Jesus Christ, death no longer has the last word. Death no longer has the final say so. For every believer who experiences death because he got up, we will all get up again. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, he says, listen, I tell you a mystery. He says, we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. How? In the flash, in the twinkling of an eye. When? At the last trumpet. For the trumpet one day will sound. Here it is. The dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. Keep talking, Paul. The Bible says in verse 53, for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with the immortality. In other words, we're going to take off our old bodies that die and put on new bodies that live forever. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written, come on y'all, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Praise be unto God. Look at verse 55. Then we can say together, where, oh death, is your victory? Where where, oh, death is your sting. Hallelujah. Where, oh, death is your victory. Where, oh, death is your sting. Death no longer has the last word. Death no longer has the final say so. Our God, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ does. Our God has robbed the grave. Hallelujah. Because he got up. I can take him in his word. He is not here. Just as he said, he has risen from the dead. How do we conclude this? We conclude by what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God every single day, come what may. But thanks be to God. Why? He gives us the victory. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we conclude this Resurrection Sunday. That's how we conclude walking from this day forward, giving thanks be to God because he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Whew, I'm going to take this coat off. It's getting hot <laughs> because he got up. We can take him at his word because he got up. We can get up. And when it's all said and done, because he got up, we will get up in the twinkling of an eye on that glorious day. I was buried beneath my shame. Could carry that kind of weight. It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. And all my failures, I tried. Too high, it was my turn till I met you. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day.
my soul And now your freedom is all that I know I love that song. I ran out of that grave. Maybe you're trying to figure out, man, how in the world can I get away from the old me? How in the world can I have this resurrection power that you're talking about, Pastor? Why not allow today be your day for you to say yes to Jesus Christ? And let me tell you how, and I'm going to get out your way. Because the Bible says, if you believe in your heart, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe that God raised him from the dead on the third day, Resurrection Sunday, you shall be saved. And you can live forever in heaven. You can live forever. The Bible says in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. See, for the believer, it's never goodbye. Even with tears in our eyes and that stuff is hard on this side. But for the believer, it's never goodbye. For the believer is, I'll see you later, because we have a promise that in the twinkling of an eye, we will all be changed, and the dead in Christ will rise, and the ones that are still alive when Christ comes back, we're going to all be caught up in the air. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? But it starts with you believing in your heart. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Ask Jesus to be Lord of your life. A.B., you make it sound like it's as easy as ask, believe, confess, because it is. So this Resurrection Sunday, put Romans 10, 9 into motion. Ask, believe, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And for my brother and for my sister that already knows Jesus, I declare and I decree that you're going to come back from this because he got up you can get up because he got up. You will come back from this pain, from this depression, from this setback. Because he got up, you'll get up. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the one that needs to accept you into their heart. Then I also pray for the one God that already knows you, but just has lost faith in the journey. God, I pray, God, that my first brother and sister would say yes to you. And then I pray, God, for my brother and my sister that already knows you, that they would say yes to getting back up again. When life asks them, do you wish to continue? I pray they will say yes. I pray they will remember that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now lives in them. 
So God, on this Resurrection Sunday, we praise you and we worship you because Jesus Christ, he got back up. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. You're looking for Jesus? He's not there. He has risen, just as he said. He got up. Take time to share this word with somebody and share this time of praise with somebody. Take time to go to www.motionchurch.online. Check out the notes. Fill out a prayer card. Take what you heard. Take what you experienced. And go put it into motion. God bless you guys. It's Resurrection Sunday. Peace. Bye.
by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome. We will weep and we will overcome by the blood. Jesus, awesome.